Okay, I'm gonna try and quickly review this book. Uh, it is called Caramelo by Sandra Cisneros. And uh, I know it's been a while, I haven't reviewed a book in a while, but um, I don't really write out my material. I just sort of wing it when I record these things and it makes me super anxious because I wanna do the books justice, uh, but I'm kind of a hot mess and I'm still too lazy to sit down and write out what I wanna say about these books. So yeah, <laughs> let's get started. This book is so beautifully written and I sort of just kind of read like a blurb of the, like about the author thing at the end. And this book took her 10 years to write, which it shows because it is, she is such a poetic writer and it's so beautifully written. And I just love that about this book. And um, also like, you know how sometimes you read the book and you're like, oh, that's why it's called Caramelo, right? At first you think, oh, okay, it has to, it's called Caramelo because of like skin color, right? No, there's like so many layers as to why this book is called Caramelo, which again is very like poetic of the book because I think this book kind of explains like generational trauma or it's like a story about generational trauma that's caused by maybe like the patriarchy. It's, you know, sort of like, oh, the men um, in these women's lives do these things that, you know, kind of messes with their lives in a way. And uh, when the men actually maybe do the right thing, they're chivalrous or they're passionate and anyway and but yeah they're just messing with the women in their lives uh and that generational trauma that's like passed down because it's like oh my mom died and then sent me away to live with my cousin who basically turned me into her own personal slave uh so that my dad could start a new life with his new family you know so don't complain that it's hot outside that kind of uh generational trauma that's passed down um which is very prevalent in like Hispanic families. I know this because I'm in a Hispanic family and I'm now in my 30s uh, recognizing all the generational trauma <laughs> that is instilled in me. And that's why I think I like this book because you start, you see it, you recognize it. And I'm sure it's prevalent in a lot of families that thinking like, I walked 10 miles in the snow barefoot to school. So I don't wanna hear you complain about the TV not working, I don't, you know, we know, we all know. But basically uh, it starts off as the main character. She's a little girl and she talks about her many years of going every year to Mexico to visit her grandmother and uh, who she doesn't like. She's labeled, you know, the bad grandmother or, or not the good. I forget, it's been a while. Uh, I think it's been a month since I, since I read this. Um, but then you kind of figure out why the grandmother is not perceived as a nice person. Uh, again, because it's that trauma that shaped who she became, how who she grew into, right? And you kind of like feel sorry for her, but you know, at the same time, it's like, uh, she could be a good person though. <laughs> so we all know family members like this. So I think that's why this is such a good book to read. And at one point, uh, she kind of, uh, cause at some point the grandmother passes away, but she like channels the grandmother's spirit and starts writing like through the spirit of the grandmother. And it's so good. I don't know why I loved it. Cause it's like, I don't know you, I, especially when someone like, okay, for instance, my mother passed away last April. She's only been gone for like a year, but like sometimes you just hear her voice or I, you, I just hear her voice like in my head, you know, like, I don't know. It's hard to, I'm sure, again, I'm sure we've all had someone that passed away and that we were very close with, but like you can always hear their little judgmental voice in the back of your mind. So you should read this book because it is so, 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 so good. Okay, bye-bye.